Hello from the headquarters, welcome back. I said I wasn't going to reuse that opening line, but I lied because I didn't expect to be making another video in the headquarters so soon. Today I will go through all the headquarters challenges that you can find under the game modes category. I guess the headquarters is considered a game mode. We will go through in detail all the hidden things you have to do for these challenges, such as the three secret firing range sequences, the three hidden gridiron balls, and falling 38 feet. The other things I'll mention at the end, but they aren't too tricky. I'll try to clear up all the confusion surrounding these. So far I've only seen little bits and pieces of no commentary guides for some of these things on YouTube, and I've also done some discovering of my own. So here's everything you need to know in one descriptive guide. Timestamps will be in the description if you've already done some of these things and want to skip through, like the gridiron balls, which I suspect many of you have already gone searching for. Let's start with those. You can get them in any order, but by far the easiest one to grab is up on this ledge. Just hop on the broken concrete, do a little sprint jump aiming where I did, and the ball is right there. It's cool that one of them is super easy to get if you ever want to play around with it with people in the lobby. That jump might take a couple tries, but shouldn't be too difficult, unless some butthole is sitting on the concrete blocking you from going up there, in which case you'll just have to come back another time. The next one I'll show has got to be the one the least people have, as I would consider it the most difficult, but you'll see why I'm saving the other one for last. I'm only slightly ashamed to admit it took about 15 minutes of hopping to get up to the top. Thankfully the first part is very easy. You have to get on top of this slanted crossbar back here. You can do that by holding back against the wooden part at the bottom like that, or you can also try holding forward into the notch created by the ladder, as shown. Although then you have to go around the corner and probably hop back up on the bar. You can only get on the bar where it's lowest, which is near the corner. Whichever way you do it in both cases practically just spam the jump button and you'll get up there you get used to this jump it's very easy next comes a more annoying part a quick sprint jump onto the hook on the corner i don't have any great tips unfortunately just try not to collide with the tower and don't keep walking off the hook once you land on it It'll take a few tries, no getting around it. Once you're there, you have to hop into the crossbar bit in the middle of the tower. The jump itself isn't hard. What's harder is not doing that. Yeah, I didn't really know what I was doing at the time, but you don't want to hit your head on the tower like that. So you have to try to step out from the hook a little bit so that you're almost floating, and then try to make the jump into the middle, as shown right there. All my fails were from trying to step away from the hook without falling off, but I never missed the jump itself, so I assume the hitbox there is pretty forgiving. Now you can walk forward a little bit and be okay, and you have to try to step out to the right ever so slightly. I can't stress that enough. You don't want to fall off. But again, you can't bump your head on the tower or you will fall. Once you think you are not underneath the tower, it's a small jump onto the hook that you see in front of you, and if you land on that, the hard part is over. Just be very careful not to choke it away. You can jump vertically here, and you should not fall off, as you can see. Just try to nudge yourself onto that wooden bar and platform, and there you have it. You can now mantle over the wall into the tower, and at last, you've done it. For many, I imagine this will be the final ball to find. You can see I'm playing the whole thing again, in case you wanted to see the continuous version of every jump. Cool stuff. Best of luck with that one. It can be tricky. I'm sure there are some nimble parkour experts who will get it on their fourth try, while people like me will struggle for a while. But you have to stick to it if you value that 100% completion. The final ball begins inside the theater area and is a bit harder than the first one, but I think much easier than the tower. I might be some kind of stupid because it took me nine whole minutes to get it right the first time, but ever since then I've gone right back up there three separate times on the first or second try every time. This first part may take many tries though. You have to hop on the elevated brick on the right side, it's best to be farther away from the wall, and do a quick sprinting jump into the corner on the left side. Aim for the outer corner of the brick that you have to land on. You'll notice that all my failed attempts have one thing in common. I'm usually hitting the brick wall on my right and sliding along it, which is not good, but I didn't realize that at the time, so try to avoid that, just sprint jump directly at the corner until you get it. This next part actually isn't bad at all, but it's where I wasted most of my time when I first went up there, because I had nobody guiding me through it. You have to jump onto that brick pillar, but just be careful to start on the left side. Stay away from the right side, because there's an invisible wall along the outside that can bounce you off if you try to jump too close to it. You can see what it's looking like there, and you can maybe imagine the invisible block there. Here's what it'll look like if you jump from just a bit farther to the left. Easy peasy. Next you have to jump across the gap onto that protruding metal pipe, which isn't as bad as it looks, just a big sprinting jump should do the trick. You might miss it once or twice, which is a bummer, but it doesn't take too long to get back. Finally, almost there, just jump onto this tiny bit of metal and move to the right side of it so you can hop up onto the crumbling concrete. You can't hop up in the middle. And once here, you can carefully navigate around the outside, and inside the shelter is the third ball, or probably second if you do these in order of difficulty. And if you go to the top, there's the secret sledgehammer. But wait, don't jump down yet. I made this the final ball because now's a great time to talk about the falling challenges. I wasn't thinking about them the first time I got up there, so I just hopped off when I was done and earned the mid-tier fall challenge. But the only one people ever have 
questions for is the top tier falling challenge for 38 feet. I tried this pointed rock, thought that might be possible, it wasn't working, so I went back up to the top. I guess here's the continuous run of jumping up there in case you wanted to see that version. If you're somebody who skipped to this falling challenge part with a timestamp and want more tips on getting up here easily, you can skip back for those. Now back up here, it seems like you aren't able to jump from the top straight out there, and that looked like it was the farthest down. I tried it from the second level, but that didn't count. Thankfully, I was now getting very confident at the parkour to get back up there. So the way I found for it to work is jumping off from the very top level down into the trench to the left. You can see the challenge complete right there. So give that a try if you're struggling with the falling challenge, or feel free to comment if you found an easier spot for it. Finally, let's go through the three secret firing range sequences. I highly recommend using an LMG with the armored division so you can deploy the bipod, and especially for the harder sequences, unlocking the 4x scope and extended mags will be very helpful, in combination with the hustle basic training for quick reloading. I went with the Lewis because I like it the most in-game and happen to have all the attachments. So, in order of difficulty, this first one is very easy. If you need to reset it to do it again, just shoot the red diamond there to make the black and white targets pop back out. If they're already there, it won't mess anything up, but there's no need to. You just have to shoot those three black and white targets in the middle, then shoot the ones closest to you. You can miss all you want, accuracy doesn't matter. Then take out the five that pop out, then the three behind those, and finally the two people that pop up. And that's it. The melons fly out, no challenge popped up because I had to re-record that one. And no, you don't have to kill the watermelons unless you want to show off how remarkable your fruit killing skills are. The next one is less trivial, I would definitely recommend having a scope for the ending. You have to shoot the six targets on the tower to flip them all around, and then take out the two people in the tower who pop up. And now, the scope will come in handy, be ready for the three targets that are going to pop up, but two of them are bad guys, the normal looking targets, and one is a civilian that you cannot hit even once, while the other targets are a three shot kill with a Lewis. The civilian target is the one that doesn't have a red center and appears to be a lady in a hat. I apologize for assuming that target's gender, but just make sure to only take out the two bad guys. Now the order that they spawn in seems to be random, sometimes the civilian is in the middle, sometimes they're on the outside. It's much easier when they're on the outside, so if they spawn in the middle and you don't get it, that's fine. Just do the targets on the tower again really quickly, and maybe the bad guys will spawn together. Now for the grand finale. This is by far the most difficult sequence, because to do it solo on console, you would have to be an aim god. On PC, I think I could do it, but with a controller, that would be tough. I needed to call for help. I think you could do it with two or three people, but the more people you can have help you, the better. And anyone who participates will earn the credit towards the challenge. That's true for any of these sequences, but the other two are fine solo. I was already partied with bowling. These kind gentlemen V Blue and Patrick responded to my cry for help on Twitter, and C Money accepted the random invite I sent him in game. With all five people working together, it only took a few minutes, so huge thank you to you four fine folks for coming. Hopefully you the viewer know some people who might want to party up to do this. If not, maybe start a little thread in the comments to see if anyone wants to group up and do it. Okay, let's get into what you actually have to do, which is relatively simple description-wise. First, I recommend turning your sensitivity down to around 3, and the ACOG plus extended mags bipod LMG, if you didn't have it before, is now going to come in very handy, along with the hustle basic training, especially if you don't have extended mags. To start off, you just have to spray down the targets in this row. Anybody can do it, but it's usually best for only one person to do it, so everyone has ammo ready for the hard part. You should see four spaced out targets, then three, and then four that are grouped two and two, and finally, one target. And when you shoot that one target, you'll You'll see a clay pigeon get launched out from one of two locations. That's going to be the hard part, but let's rewind a bit first. I discovered that this part with the targets has an invisible timer of some kind running. It isn't a difficult timer, but if you take too long at any step after shooting the first four, when you finish off that stage of targets, they will reset back to the beginning stage, being the four spaced apart targets, instead of progressing to the next stage. I found that the invisible timer on the two and two targets is long enough for you to comfortably reload. Not forever, but not too strict. However, the timer on the single target at the end seemed much shorter. It isn't crazy, you have a good second or two to shoot it, but it isn't long enough to reload an LMG, for example, even with Hustle on. If you try to reload then, or take too long in general, you won't see the Clay Pigeon get launched out, it'll just reset when you shoot it. If you have an extended mags LMG, you probably don't need to reload in the middle, but if you need to reload, you should do that right at the end of the 2 and 2 stage, then proceed to shoot the last target and shoot the single target right away. So once you get that down, because you're probably going to do it a lot, then come the Clay Pigeons, which are pretty difficult to shoot, because it will fire off one, then two at once, then three at once. They all go pretty quick, and they are pretty small, hence why if you can gather a group of people to deploy their bipod, 
gods and go to town on these things, you'll have a much better time. So that's what it looks like when completed. Clearly, they knew this was the big one. Another thank you to these guys for helping out. We all got the challenge completion for it, which is nice. And after getting that done, it was cool to just hang out in the headquarters together. V Blue hit the big prestige button, got his red smoke flyby and glowing prestige symbol. That is temporary, by the way. It does go away when you leave the headquarters. But yeah, the headquarters is a pretty cool social space. It just sucks when it makes the load times ridiculous and doesn't allow you to ever leave it or even mute it. So I can't work on my classes or look at challenges without supply drop noise and annoying mics that I have to mute individually. I'm loving the fact that I get into empty headquarters lobbies right now. I hope that gets worked on. Please let me leave the dang headquarters or at least mass mute it. But that's all for these three headquarters challenges. The other stuff is all fairly simple, like shooting 300 targets. They do have to be targets that flip back and forth or get destroyed. You can't just spray into one of the stationary ones, even if it does give hit markers. But you might get that done just doing the clay pigeon thing. The 1v1s you know how to do, just challenge people to 1v1s. And the final three are just time dependent, but are fairly simple once you can actually do them. The headquarters AA gun event hasn't happened yet, but once they do start happening, I imagine it won't be too confusing. I believe you can use these anti-air guns around the headquarters and apparently collect care packages too, so that should be interesting. We'll just have to wait and see. Well, hopefully some part of this guide has helped you out. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.